Hey everybody! In the last video, we went over how we were going to uh, how to kind of get started on this wooden texture. I kind of showed you just a little bit of the pipeline that I like to use um, as far as texturing this, um, you know. And then, so in this video, we are we are going to move on to a different material. In this material, we are going to go into will be the the brass kind of metal areas, and so with that, as I recommend every time that we creating. I recommend you go ahead and try to find some brass materials, whatever it might be, um, just to just to get an idea of what you're going for. Um, here's a nice stylized material I have here. This one's interesting. It has some of the pock kind of damaged metal. Uh, this one has a little bit of uh, damage as well, um, kind of surface damage. You know, this has a little bit more surface damage. So um, there's definitely you know some really good examples that we have here which you can use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this onto my next screen and um, just have it hang out there just while I get, uh, I'm starting to texture this. So uh, in the previous videos, we actually already kind of masked out our metal material. And another reason I use this metal mask, because now anytime I draw anything on a part that I don't want uh, to be drawn on, it'll, it won't show. It'll only show up where I intend it to be drawn on. So that's another way. Um, to kind of prevent yourself from actually drawing things that you don't want to be uh, textured in a certain way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first add in, uh, for the metal, I actually want to start making this kind of unique look where it's like this layered look. Um, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go and add a fill layer under my metal channel. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And I actually want this fill layer to, to basically be kind of the same color here. And then I want to shift it to a more a, a nice deeper orange. And maybe I might move this up a little bit, make it perhaps a little darker. So something a little bit deeper orange. So now if I toggle on and off, you can see how there's two different kind of yellow orange colors going on here. And I'm going to just call this color variation. Or maybe color var one. So I might put in a second color there too. Um, I'm going to turn off all the other colors. I just want color for this case. I'm actually going to be just kind of looking at this area right here. And what I want to do here is I want to only have certain parts of this show up that um, kind of orangey. So I'm going to go into add a black mask to my color var 1. And then I'm going to add a paint layer to that black mask. In which now I'm going to go here. I'm going to look around at some different uh, things. I might try clouds. That might be good. Um, I'm just kind of looking at a few of these. Ho hovering over them you can get some ideas. Um, Maybe, I don't know. Let's go and do something a little more procedural. So I might go with like either dirt, clouds, or dots, perhaps. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do dirt one. And you can see this kind of showing up a little bit. Uh, so I might even go to the contrast and push up a little more. Maybe I can make the scale a little larger. Um, I can also adjust the balance. So I'm going to put the balance something fairly low. I might want to tweak this a little bit higher, a little bit more dramatic. Something like that perhaps. And then I'm going to go back into my dirt generator. I'm going to make it a little bit more dramatic there. Okay. So now you see this coloration a little more. Um, so what I'm going to do, maybe I want to make more orange again. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to select that and I'm going to filter. So I'm going to select the black mask, I'm going to filter, and this time I'm going to add in a blur slope. And let's see how that looks. So now we're getting these kind of really chunky blur looks. I think it's looking pretty pretty cool. Um, I might want, to, might want to add a little bit more red to this. So there's a nice thing about using these layers is that you can adjust it really quickly. This is starting to get more of the kind of look I'm going for. Um, so I actually want to duplicate this color var1. I'm going to just click on it and hit control D duplicate. Otherwise, otherwise you can also right click on it and you can duplicate layers. I'm going to change this from color var1. I'm just going to call it color var2. Oops. Color var2. And I'm going to select the color var2 color. I'm going to change this to something a lot lighter. So perhaps something a little more in the yellow family. And then I want to go in here to my dirt one. I want to hit randomize. And that looks a little bit better. 
There you go. I actually might want to move that. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's kind of looking a little cool. Um, but that might be a little bit too bright for me even. So maybe I'll move this a little bit warmer tones. There you go. Yeah, I think I like that kind of yellow, nice uh, kind of medium yellow color. And I might, and I actually might want to go ahead and hit this random again. Let's see. There you go. I like that. I particularly like that one a little more. I think it looks pretty nice. I could also mess around with the blending mode. So maybe I might want to select on where it says normal here. I might change that to prep overlay, which gives me a different kind of look. I can also adjust that to, I don't know, hard light, which gives me a different appearance. And these all will give you different kind of looks. So um, and I do encourage you to explore a few of these other ones. Um, multiply looks pretty nice. I think this, this might give me a, Maybe it'll give me a color I'm going for. Let's see, color burn. That'd be a little bit too intense. So Yeah, so there's there's definitely a bunch of different options that you can go for here. Um, in my case I think we'll go with multiply, kinda of like how that looks. And you can see that in there. Alright, so um, now that I have this color variation made up, I'm going to start to uh, kind of draw in a few different details here. And now I would, uh, I mean, I, I would like to draw in details all around. And I think in this case, I'm going to draw in details for, um, I guess maybe I'll just go ahead and do, I'm going to do this section right here. So I'm going to add a paint, a new paint layer on top of there. And what I want to do for this is I want to start to draw in something uh, light. So again, I'm going to move the passive down really low. So let's put the passive down pretty low. Um, I'm going to right click out here. And I want to make sure that my uh, base color, I want it to be pretty dark. Let's go something, maybe a nice deep red might be good. So as you there. Um, I'm going to bring down the size of my brush a little bit. There you go. Okay, so I actually might bring my passy back up. Right, so what I want to do here is I'm, I'm just looking at some of my, some of my uh, references. So as you see here, we have some like really hard lines we can paint in there. Um, we can paint in different. We already kind of made some of these, you know, uh, imperfections in the surface, which I think were good there. Uh, a few other things. So might want to put in something like pockmark. So let's go ahead and start with the pockmark um, for this. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in here and I'm just using my, uh, my, my pen again. I'm going to start just to draw kind of a pockmark right there, right? And I want to actually have it be darker towards the, towards the one side. And then I want to come back in with, I want to select some, a brighter color. I'm going to bring this opacity up perhaps a little bit and I'm going to just start to trace out this bright part and I actually might want to go even brighter than that so let's go ahead and let's set up an even brighter kind of pop color so maybe something like that and I really want to make this edge kind of okay it's coming out so something like that now um, be careful though that you don't actually get rid of the and for one, you don't want it to be too noticeable, which is starting to get kind of a too noticeable look. So I want to come back in here a little bit and, and clean up to the hair. I'm just kind of finding a few of these. Let's see. Oops, too big of a brush. So I want to just come here and kind of add in some details. Um, so that's starting to kind of look okay. I might come in here and maybe I'll draw in a, a nice... I like have a, a gouge in it. So maybe if you were to look at, I don't know, something like this, you know, you have these gouges, you have these edges that are a little bit brighter. Uh, that can help too. So maybe I might come in here and draw on a gouge right across here. So I'm just going to start to draw that gouge. Um, this actually might be a little bit too, too dark. So there you go. I think it's a little bit better color for what I'm going for. And I could come back in here again with, Lower the opacity. Maybe I'll bring bring this up a little more. 
Um, and then I might come in with a bright color. So let's see if I can get just a little bit of that yellow in there. And I'm going to start to draw in this brighter yellow. Um, now this is, sometimes it's easier to do actually when you're in the 2D view, like right here. And I, I kind of prefer to work in the 2D view. Um, and I like to build a view in 3D, but I also like to be able to work in 2D for many as much of this. So that looks okay. Um, you know, it doesn't look great, but you're going to want to start drawing some imperfections around here. Um, now, the higher the higher the mesh uh, resolution is, the the nicer, the less pixelated this stuff will be. But also think about though. I, mean, I know obviously this looks a little pixelated, but what are the chances that you're going to be this close to something? So that's another thing too to think about is, you know, by having great contrast, you're going to be able to, um, you know, kind of kind of like a Fool the fool the viewer that there's more depth there than there really is just by having a really nice contrast. You know, obviously now the way it is as right now, it's a little bit too uh, dark right there. So I might come in here with a, a little bit of an orange. I might just touch there a little bit just to kind of soften that up a little bit there. I might come in with that. So this will soften up a little bit so it's not demanding too much attention. Um, another thing I might want to do, I'm gonna turn my my mesh wireframe again. Now a few things that I'm thinking about is if there's light coming down. Right here, this top part right here, oops, I'll go ahead and just circle that for you. So this top part right here is going to get the most of the light because it's coming straight down as if it's like a lamp, right? So therefore, the light down here will kind of be fading. And if you really want to get technical, the, um, let's see, turn this off, okay. The light underneath here will be really, really dark. So maybe something like this. Um, let's see where it was. I guess to be right about I'm gonna go with a nice deep violet. Okay, so this light here will be pretty sick and dark that um, you won't really be able to even see much yellow there at all because it's gonna be pretty dark. So you know something like this might might be what you're kind of going for. So I'm just kind of coming in here, picking some colors and painting a little bit and so so now you kind of have a little bit of that uh, a little bit of that darkness happening but also you might want to bring in a little bit of lightness to just this top part so as you see there I'm bringing just a little bit of lightness there um, I might bring in a little bit more darkness down here towards the corner I probably should be using my size for this um, so you know, I'm also kind of painting some of this like internal shadows. Um, it's maybe kind of called it ambient inclusion. So, painting some of that. So, as you see here where it's really dark, we want to make sure that we convince them that it's dark down there, um, whether it be through you know, muted colors, maybe just really dark uh, hues such as purples and maroons. Um, maybe, yeah, so that's, that's one way. So, then I come over here and I'm going to want to have a little bit brighter color. So maybe in this case, maybe I want to add in a new layer um, that I can just start to paint. Um, I'm going to call this maybe a highlight, perhaps. Just HL for highlight. And then I want to um, maybe pick a little bit more of a bright color. So something like this. I can come through here and just draw on that. And then I can, from there, if I want to, I can, of course, do my filter effects. If I want to add in a, perhaps a blur to that. Um, you know, to kind of give it a little bit of a blur. I can also tone it down if I want to. But what it's going to do now is it's going to create this illusion that the top is brighter. It's catching more light. Um, that way. So let's go ahead and turn off this this frame. So oops. So you can not kind of see that the top is catching more light than perhaps the bottom. I might go back in there. I might do a little bit more. So I'm going to come back in here, turn this on. I might just want to paint on just a little bit more to make sure I can kind of really drive that that illusion home um, and then also I might want to come in here and just maybe paint in some some deeper colors along the bottoms so you know something like this and then I can also change the color to like multiply I can change the divide um, but as you see here now you know I'm able to to really just kind of get that that uh, depth starting to build up I want to go back here, maybe make it a little more yellow. Um, let's see. So yeah, 
Maybe they might even want to make it more white. Mm. So I can add a new. Something else to think about too is how how is it, you know, you want to tell a story for this, so like, how is the edges going to look? You know, you might even come as far, go as far as creating a, or having a new brush. Um, I personally like to use just the standard brushes, but that doesn't mean you can't come in here and find a, you know, maybe a, I don't know, say, I think there's a, there's a couple of really interesting brushes that you can use some nice, so like maybe a sponge here, maybe a sponge brush gives you a really interesting texture. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and drop this down really low. I'm going to find a nice color for this. Um, it's basically like this. I can come through here. I can just think, okay, these corners would be really handled a lot. So therefore, I want these corners to have a little bit more um, you know, detail on it, or a little bit more kind of a um, you know, roughness to it, or a little more uh, brighter color because it's been worn down, you know, whereas it hasn't been worn, worn down, perhaps the color's a little bit more true. So as you see here, I'm just kind of come through here, I'm painting a little bit of these edges, a little harder, I might paint some of these edges here just to show that, yeah, this has been, this has been handled on the corners a little bit more. Uh, so now when I turn off my mesh, you see there, now it's starting to get that little bit more of a, a look of, you know, being handled and come back in without the wireframe perhaps and start to kind of draw in a little more of that detail um, like so. You can kind of do this however you want. And then you can of course come through here again and maybe this time around I come up with a sponge brush and I draw a little bit more of that scratch in there. I draw a little more of this pock mark. Maybe I draw a second pock mark in there. Um, you know so so you can kind of handle that however you want for the metal. And so this is how I, how I create my metal. I, I thought about the direction lights coming at it, where it's been handled the most, use a lot of color variation, and kind of recycled those, you know, those uh, paint strokes over and over each other to really create this depth of, um, you know, kind of convincing the, the, the viewer that they are seeing actual light and they're seeing actual um, you know, kind of imperfections in the metal. So, and um, so that's going to conclude this video. Now, in the next video, we are going to wrap up our little mini texture series um, with we're going to create the cloth for the for the um, for the stool, and then we'll also just go over how I created the keys um, and you know, kind of the final materials uh, for the for the piano. So, I'll see you next video.